other than your host, uh, Pastor J, Apostle J, Queenie Daniels. Call me what you want to call me. Just don't call me collect. I am very excited. This is me and my honey hosting today. Amen. And we have my special guest, past, well, Chef Pastor Clay on the hour today. And he's going to be sharing um, a word from the Lord a little later on in the broadcast. First of all, I want to say... Uh, Thank you, Pastor Clay, for joining us today. We're so honored to have you here today and be able to talk with you about the Word of God. Amen. I'm awesome. Oh, awesome. Praise the Lord. I'm honored. Awesomely honored. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, I, um, you know, we're getting to, like they say, a little green room banter before we got on the air. But uh, me and you met back in, and you had the year, I had forgot the year. Yep. But I remember it was at the new Cools album release party. Uh huh. It was on August first, twenty fourteen. I have a good memory. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, I can't say the same. <laughs> Not precise, anyway. But I knew that uh, God wanted me to talk to you live on my show, and uh, I had an opportunity to. Well, I sent a message to you some months back. I think right when Corona decided to step on the scene. Yes, ma'am. And um, before we get into that, because it's some, it's some questions I want to ask you, but go introduce yourself for those that are uh, tuning in right now. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the opportunity to do so. Uh, my name is Errol J. Clay. I'm also known as the chef pastor, and I'm the lead pastor of what's called Flavor Church. Flavor Church is a non-denominational uh, spirit-filled mm -hmm. church in the Fort Bend County area, mm -hmm. and also the owner and the funeral director in charge with my wife. At Clay's Mortuary and Cremations. Okay. All right. Businessman. Now, that's why I wanted to get into a little bit about your business, but more of the intimate side of it, because dealing um, with your business, you have different people that you uh, have to interact with during a very, very sensitive time in their lives. In the it, uh, since Corona began, have you uh, tell us a little bit about you know what has happened since Corona? What you've experienced? Oh yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, a lot of times people uh, give a shout out to the amazing people in the medical field. You know, they call them the first responders and all that kind of stuff that deal with the Corona firsthand. But sometimes people forget about us in the funeral service industry who are the what we call the last responders. And so uh, I've had a couple of clients that were uh, tested positive for COVID. And so um, we really deal with every client with what we call universal precautions. And so right. for us, it's not really too much differently because we, we, don't, we never know what people have because some people could have passed away and it wasn't diagnosed yet. Right, so, right, right. We just don't really know. Okay, hold okay. on. Yeah, hold on one second. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm at the mortuary, I'm at the mortuary right now, and I got business. No going. problem. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Okay. All right. All right. How do you do? Uh, so, those of you that have just tuned in, I, we want to take this time. This is also a day where, uh, what is it? Election day, right? Yes. Very, oh very my important. lord! And mm -hmm. I'm so proud. Hold on, I'm hold so on. proud of my children for getting out. Yeah, because this is an opportunity for us to reshape the history and the future of the United States right now. Hmm. Today is going to be an historical day, you know, and it, it, it's, it's sometimes not so present to you in times when, when history is, when you're making history, let's put it like that. Right. And, and we need to understand that right now we have the opportunity to make history with this election and make the uh, voters' voice heard once again. That's right. That's right. So we want to we want to make sure that we, we, you know, respond and tell people 
that no matter what you're doing today, make a conscious effort and get out and go vote. And go because vote. we all want everyone's voice to be heard. And I think that once the entire country's voice is heard, things will shape up a little bit better for us, period. And this is a perfect teaching time for, for families, for uh, for the parents, and to teach their children the importance of voting. Because I think right. that uh, when I was a kid, it wasn't that much emphasis on voting, you know. But now, you know, even your children, you need to let them know how important it is to let their voice be heard through the world. You see what I'm saying? Your vote is important in this world. The, to the entire world. So yeah. I'm excited about, uh, like I say, uh, hats out to my children and got it done. Well, like you said, this is a time for parents to get real starts in their child's life and let them know the value of their vote and what has had to, especially in the black community, because there was so much uh, that our ancestors had to go through just for us to get the right to vote. And for you to sit back on your hands and, and not vote. exercise that right, right or that civic, it's more of a civic duty than yeah. anything, more yeah. so right. But the thing is, we have so many people who fought, bled, and died for mm-hmm. us to have the opportunity Come just to now. go out and vote. Yeah. You know, and, and for us to um, negate ourselves by not voting because we don't like the candidates, we don't, you know, we don't understand or we don't do our own homework to to, uh, you know, vet these candidates is really a uh, disservice to the black community. And how can you holler Black Lives Matter when you aren't even willing to participate in making sure that Black Lives Matter? Uh, and that's true. Welcome back, Pastor. Uh, how did, Weigh in on it. How do you feel about uh, the importance of voting today? Uh, I think it's very important for us to use the power that we've been given uh, to make a difference. And I think sometimes the reason why a lot of people may not vote because they feel like they're insignificant. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's not going to matter anyway. And so I think that's why a lot of them take it lightly. But that's one of the things that helps me because uh, personally, I hate politics, but mm-hmm. I have to, I, uh, but I understand politics. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, right. So, so, I, so I don't like to vote either, but I understand that I have a right and you can't complain about anything if you have not done your part to contribute. Exactly. 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 We, and, and, and Pastor, it's funny that you say that because I don't I don't like per se to vote, but I know there's a necessary evil. That's right. You know, because because the thing is we have so many, you know, politics within itself is a corrupt industry. That's right. And the thing about it is we want to get the least corrupt person that we can get in there <laughs> that will somewhat push our agenda. Yes. Because for so long in the United States of America, we as black citizens have been pushed out, have been kept out. We have been negated. Railroad. We have been railroaded in situations. We have been uh, overlooked. And we just simply need to put people in there who will at least give a hint of a possibility of us having some type of uh, say so and some type of opportunity to uh, equate ourselves with the uh, American dream, as they call it. Mm-hmm. Yes, so that that's why, and that's and I've, I've voted since I was 18, yes. ever since in every election that I've ever been eligible for, I have voted. And um, I just, like you said, I don't like to do it, but I know that it's a necessary evil because I understand the political system in the United States. And how it affects everything that we deal with, you know, from the judicial system to uh, fair housing acts to, uh, you know, where where you're able to, you know, where you're able to live, where you're able to go buy groceries. And I mean, it it really affects everything in your lifetime. And and we really undereducate ourselves when it comes to comes to. Politics the in the politics, United States. And that's the truth. That's the truth. Yeah, we I undereducate know. ourselves and we need that's to I educate it's ourselves time, a little more. It's a teaching time. It's right, really exactly. Time. And I, 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 you know? I wholeheartedly agree with you on that, uh, Apostle, and, and you're absolutely right. This is a time for teaching because, like I said, this election, I think, will shape our future. Yes, it in the will. next 40, you know, the next 40 years, yes, it, it will. Will, will be determined 
on this election uh, this year. Amen. So let's, uh, we can talk more about the election, y'all, a little later on in the show, you know, but I want to get back into my talk with uh, Pastor Clay about, uh, what do you call it? Flavor Church. Flavor Church. Now, y'all, they call him Chef Pastor, and he's going to explain to me why they call him Chef Pastor. <laughs> I would love to answer that question for you. Well, the reason why I'm called the Chef Pastor is, is something that actually God gave me many years ago, back around 2001. I, I started pastoring when I was 21, back mm-hmm. in 1999. Right. And uh, I had a church at the time called Just God Church. And so you see all those shirts, people walking around calling to say Just God on them. Mm-hmm. I, I had the Just God vision before they did. Okay. Uh, but, but I had a vision. That, so I was doing Just God. Well, about 2001, I had a friend of mine. Uh, he was changing the name of his church. And so he asked me to come and preach the church anniversary service as they were, uh, you know, celebrating the, the switch over to the new name of his church. Mm-hmm. And so at the time, his church was called Christian World Church. And he was changing it to victory life church okay. so the lord gave me a, a message call if you kill the cook you get the victory mm. and so when you think about a military army the army the soldiers they have to eat and so if you want to hurt anybody go after anybody go after the cook or the chef the one who is feeding them and so i began to talk about how we as men and women of god go through attacks that are greater than the people sometimes because we're the ones that are feeding them. So if we're discouraged, if we're depressed, if we have a broke, busted, and disgusted mindset, and we're hopeless, what are we going to do for the people that the Lord has called us to serve? We're not going to serve them, and so they're not going to have the strength that they need. So long story short, I just begin to put two and two together and and just say, okay, God, what are you telling me? And so the Lord began to tell me, I'm calling you to be the chef pastor. And so just like you have a natural chef who feeds people spiritually, I mean, naturally, I'm called to feed people spiritually, and that's based on Jeremiah 3 and 15, where God says, and I will give you pastors according to my heart who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So we have a teaching ministry, a word-based ministry. Of course, it's spirit-filled. Right. And we uh, base all of our teachings off the word of God, and God speaks to me through food analogies, and all of my sermons have food titles. And so Long story short, we had Just God from 99 up until 2014. Uh, right when I met you, I was actually with Just God. But at that time, God was shifting me, and he uh, birthed Flavor Church in us. And so everything that I was doing was speaking and exuding flavor, all of my uh, food messages and everything. And so it just hit me. Even our ap- uh, our ushers at the church, when you came to Just God, they all wore aprons that said, uh, serving him while serving you. So we were already wow. doing doing this and so i just kind of walked into it okay fully embraced it around probably around 2006 is when i embraced it but the uh the flavor church was birthed in 2014 so okay. september the 4th 2014 is when flavor church was officially uh birthed and so that's it in a nutshell <laughs> amen, amen. awesome yeah oh um, let me, let me okay, flavor is actually an acronym and so mm-hmm. letter f stands for faith Letter Mm -hmm. L stands for love. Letter A stands for anointing. Letter V stands for vision. Letter O stands for opportunity. And letter R stands for restoration. And so that's what we do. We bring the flavor. Amen. 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 I like that. I like that. Uh, I am so excited about the word that God is going to use you to share today. Amen. Amen. Uh, I don't like the prolonged time. I love when God says it's time for the word, it's time for the word. Uh, so I want, I'm going to give the floor over to you uh, okay. to pray and then lead us in the word of God today. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time of sharing the grace as we prepare to eat this heavenly meal on today. We thank yes. you for, for strength and uh, nourishment coming to our lives. Yes, thank you that you're feeding us. We say this today, oh, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us, feed us to overflow. Now, Father, I'm asking that you would just use me this afternoon just to feed something that will hit the spot for your people today. I pray yes. that you think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. I say none of me, but all of you. We decrease today so that you can increase. Fill us to overflow in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. So. When you uh, invited me to minister, I was like, what do you want me to share? And you said, just flow. So I was like, okay, Father, let me know. 
what you want your people to eat on today. And so with this being a very historic day, election day, this is what the, the word he gave us to serve you all today. So it's called partaking in the peace of God by electing Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, just, you know, for the little time I have with you today is partaking in the peace of God. Right now, there are so many people, as you talked about earlier, that are in fear because of COVID. And they don't know what's going on. They're scared to go places. Uh, I, I remember uh, a pastor in Florida, he got arrested right when the uh, COVID restrictions were. Right, in I saw yeah, his name is Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. And he right. point, he says, y'all didn't close down the liquor stores, mm. or whatever, <laughs> but you're going to lock me up for church, whatever, because they didn't consider a lot of people didn't consider the church as essential. But for a lot of people, that's where they got comfort and they got strength. Thank God that we're bigger than the four walls and we have uh, streaming opportunities like this here. But there are people that are really in fear, even believers there. They don't know what to do. I know uh, musicians and things. Uh, that were used to getting salaries and getting honorariums and engagements. And now all that's been cut off. And so we're all having to try to reshape ourselves to a new normal. And what it is, is rely, calling us to rely on God even more. Amen. Yeah. There you go. Because the one thing to tell people, you know, y'all live by faith, live by faith. But when you actually are in a battle and you have to live by faith, it's a whole different ball game. And so uh, for me, I've had to learn how to, take the faith to the next level because I've already been living by faith and have gone through much adversity as I'm pretty sure you all have but yes, sir. sticking with him and so that's what I kind of want to talk about today and kind of feed you with is partaking and so I got some little props here I don't know if y'all can see them clearly but I got a platter I got a plate and I got a bigger platter mm -hmm. right so as grown-ups we get a choice right and so on, on our plates if you go to a buffet or you go to like uh, maybe like an a la carte place like Luby's if you choose nothing but the desserts, I got a whole <laughs> jar of Hershey's Kisses here. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> yeah. If you choose nothing but desserts, when you get to a time of battle, you're going to have a sugar rush and then a sugar crash. Right. There are a lot of people that they have things that are superficial that has been filling their lives. And so now that they're in battle, they don't have any uh, sustenance or enough to sustain them. And so many people are becoming casualties of not even the physical sickness of Corona, but just the fear that we hear on Fox and CNN and our local media outlets. Right. And so they're like trying to figure out what we're going to do. And so that's when we as believers, as you were talking about with the children, how we have to educate the natural children. We also have to uh, educate the spiritual children and let them know that even though it's a challenge in time, God is faithful. And the same God who was with Big Mama them, the same uh -oh. God who was with us in times past is the same God who is with us now. And I like yeah. that. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Jesus is the same. <laughs> Yesterday, exactly. today, and forevermore. forevermore. Amen. Y'all know that Amen. scripture, I know, huh? Jesus yes, is the same. Sir. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. So forevermore. in right. every challenge that you've gone through, because right now, I, by God's grace, I'm 43, right? Right. For 43 years, I've been through all kinds of challenges. I've had uh, people shoot at me. I've had uh, near-death encounters. I've had so many things that happened to me, financial challenges, but God has always shown himself faithful. And so Amen. I'm not just, uh, what they say, I'm not new to this faith fight. I'm true to it. Man. Right, right, right. And so, and so I want to challenge you and every, anyone that may be watching us today to be encouraged and don't let fear grip you. But instead, you and I, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. And so Amen. access to the peace of God. So that's kind of what I'm going to be uh, feeding you with today. So partaking in the peace of God by electing Jesus. So we're not here to push Democrat or Republican today, because that's on you between you and God. But I right. know that the best candidate for our lives right now in this time is Jesus. So Amen. I want to challenge everyone, let's elect Jesus to our lives. Now, really quick, I want to give you a little insight or definition of what the peace of God is. And so the peace of God, what is the peace of God, Chef Pastor? Well, I'm glad you, you asked me that today. This is what the peace of God is. The peace of God can be described as a tranquil state of appreciation. Your mm. life may not be picture perfect right now. There yeah. may be some things you're like, oh, I wish I had a bigger house. I wish I had, uh, you know, it's hard to quarantine in this little tiny apartment. I wish I had a big mansion to quarantine in, or I wish I had this kind of uh, job or this kind of husband or this kind of wife. You, you're, you're dreaming, right? But we need to appreciate what we do have. Amen. Amen. I'm a funeral director. 
there's somebody that would love to switch with you. Mm. Everything that you're complaining about and griping about, oh, I don't have any new shoes. Thank God you have feet, though, legs. Oh, I right. wish they had that, you know. And so sometimes we have to do mind over matter, so to speak. And we have to begin to think. When you start thinking, you can start thinking. Exactly. You can start thinking about what God has already done for us and how he's a faithful God. And that's why sometimes you have to just stop and praise God when the enemy wants to discourage you, tell you that you're a failure, tell you that you're stuck. What are you going to do? Because now they have, they've downsized your company now. And that money that you were getting, the bonuses, all that's just abruptly ended. What are you going to do? How are you going to pay your bills? But you got to understand, God is faithful. Yes, he is. He, he has a, a supernatural stimulus plan for me and my family. <laughs> Amen. Because he's my source. Amen. He's my strength. Amen. And so Amen. instead of us depending on social security, we got some supernatural security. Come on. Yes, yes. Amen. It's found in Jesus. So now look at this here now. The peace of God can be described as a tranquil state of appreciation and faith. Letter F in the flavor acronym. Faith. Without faith, what? It's impossible for us to please God. The biggest thing that the Lord wants for us as believers is for us to believe him. And so I want to challenge all of us to stay in faith and continue to believe God despite what it looks like. Now, it also requires a mixture of humility and courage to experience God's peace. Because fear is what the enemy uses to operate his kingdom. But God uses faith to operate his kingdom. And so how do we get faith? We get faith by eating on the word of God. How do we get fear? By eating on all of the negative outside forces out there that want to bring us down. And so how do we do this? Well, let me give you this here. This word peace, it comes from a, a Hebrew word called shalom. And so the peace of God in a nutshell is simply the shalom of God. And this is what shalom or peace means. It means wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, and tranquility. Now, if a natural father or mother can take good care of their children, how much more will the heavenly father take care of us? And so we have to have a blessed assurance that God's got me. I have two precious miracle children that are ages uh, seven and five. And they don't worry about things. They, When we need juice, they say, Daddy, we need some juice. So they already know I'm going to hook them up with some juice boxes. When they want yeah. some uh, whatever they like to eat. My, my kids now have gotten bougie now. They want to eat shrimp. You know what I'm saying? When they go places. I like salmon, and they like shrimp. And so they just ask for it. They don't care. They don't look at the price of the menu when we're out at a place. My daughter, we were at a restaurant on Sunday. And, and my daughter says, yes, I'll take the spinach dip, please. She didn't. They didn't worry about it. So what I'm telling you and I is that we have to get to a place of where we have our reliance and our trust in God, knowing that God is our source, knowing that he's our strength and he's our provider and that he wants to prosper us. So I'm, I'm what you would call, I guess, a prosperity preacher. But I'm not into like taking advantage of people and all that. Exactly. Stuff. No, but I, what I believe the word prosper means, it means to do better. It means to advance. And I believe Amen. with us voting, we're trying to to prosper and do better. And God wants us to, but we're not trying to do better to look down on someone, but we're looking, uh, we're looking to be in a better position so that we can be blessed to be a blessing. And that's what kingdom citizens should do. I believe God has no problem uh, increasing any of us and elevating any of us, but I believe he wants to make sure that our hearts are knitted towards him. Right. Right. Because, you know, money is simply an amplifier. So there are people that have money and they're, uh, jerks. And so what does money do? It takes you from being a broke jerk to a rich jerk. Yeah. <laughs> when, you're, when you're in a situation where you're limited on money and you got kids or children rather, and you want to buy them gifts, you might have to go to the dollar store and buy Christmas presents. Right. Right. Cause that's all. Right. Have. But if the Lord were to increase your money, you can say, now I can take those kids and bless them a little bit more and go to Walmart maybe and buy some more things. So money mm -hmm. is just an amplifier. Money is not a bad thing. We live in a currency based world. But what happens is that some people, they get the God complex with their money. And that's why we have all this systemic racism and uh, even the, the battles that are going on. And uh, on this past Sunday, I had the pleasure of ministering at a predominantly uh, white mega church. And they brought me in to minister a series called The Gospel and Race. And mm -hmm. in this series, we were just talking about the, the challenges that we're having in the world and how we as the church must lead out and be an example because the Bible says in 1 Peter 4 and 17, 
that judgment must first begin at the house of God before it can spread anywhere else. And so right. if we have racism in the church, then it's no wonder why the world is full of racism. But this is a, a revelation that the Lord gave me about that. When you think about racism or think about a race, a race has to have a winner and has to have a loser. And so if somebody is what you would call the superior race and they're winning, why would they want to get off of their throne and give up their championship to help you win? Exactly. And that and so but so what do we do as uh, let's say as African American people even though I have a multicultural congregation, it's not a big multicultural congregation, but I have people that are everyone is not black. Some of them are biracial, I have some others that are Hispanic, some that are, are white, but the majority of my people uh, that we fellowship with and we serve at Flavor Church are African Americans. So I have to speak mainly to what our struggle has been. But what we have to do is be careful not to allow hate yeah. to to get in. Because there's some black people that I don't like. No, oh, amen. Come on. And some of them are my family, but I don't I don't hate there you. Go. You know, and even with the president, I learned that we have to honor the president because I don't know who's watching me. You may be a Donald Trump supporter. You may love Donald Trump. But some of you, you may detest Donald Trump. But we still have to honor uh, the, the offices and the powers that be for they are named by God. And so what do you do when you feel like the system is against you? You have to elect Jesus in your life because he's our hope. And, and the Bible says here, I want to give you this verse here, John 10 and 10. And it tells us that Satan is a thief. And all he comes to do is but for it to what? To steal, to kill, and destroy. I call that the SCAD principle. And right. so anytime you and I associate with anyone, whether they're Republican, Democrat, uh, as Michael Jackson says, whether they're black or white, <laughs> we have to be careful not to allow that uh, that hatred to, to grip us. Right. Because how can we win souls if we hate people? Right. Amen. Because the Lord may send someone to us, if you're African-American, he may send someone to you to minister to that may be white, but you, you can't be like, you white devils. <laughs> that, right. that can't be your mindset, you know what I mean? And what do you exactly. do? Because my thing is that, I, 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 of course, I would because I'm proud of being an African-American, I would want my children to bring home uh, African-American mates so they can understand, the, the I guess, the struggle and have a, a heart for our family. But I would rather my my uh, child to bring home someone who is saved, Amen. And who loves God, and who's not going to pull them out of the kingdom of Jesus. And so uh, I, I believe that we have to find peace. Is what I'm saying to you in the fact that no matter who's in the White House, we have to have Jesus on the throne of our lives. Because even when someone is dirty, underhanded, maybe they're playing corporate America politics and don't want to give you the 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 uh, the position or the pay, even though you're overly qualified compared to your other counterparts, you have to know that God's got me in this. Yes. So just like Jesus couldn't be held down by the devil. Guess what, you all? I can't be held down by the devil. Man. Because I'm connected to him. So this is what I want to give you here really quick. And I want to give you this little quick little acronym because not only am I the chef pastor and give you food analogies, but I also teach an acronym. So this one I want to give you real quick. Uh, the first scripture I want to give you and this point, I call it a, a nugget today, is trust in the Lord. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 that we need to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge, acknowledge him. him. And what is he going to do? He God. shall direct our path. Yes. Somebody right now may be undecided. I remember that Brother James said earlier, if you're not voting yet, you need to get dressed and get up out of the house. Well, guess what? If you're that one that still has not voted yet and you, you're going to do it after work or after this broadcast ends today, and you're saying, I just really don't know what to do because I've, I've had people on both sides uh, try to preach to me why I should vote for each candidate. I have right. that, are, that are believers saying, how as a believer could you vote for abortion, homosexuality, and all these other things? You, you already know who you need to vote for. Then I have other people on the black side like, hey, do you see what's going on here? All this white supremacy and things. How dare you? You can't vote for that person. And so at the end of the day, Everybody has a choice. And so I'm going to put it on right. you. And I'm yeah. going to tell you, you need to trust in the Lord with yeah. all your heart and, and lean not to your own understanding. You might be like, why is the Lord telling me to vote for this candidate? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. And then once you do what he tells you to do, all you can do is say, God, I've done what you told me to do and I'm going to trust you. And so exactly. everyone today, 
I want to challenge you, no matter what you're facing, no matter what the obstacle is, no matter what the battle is, just continue trusting God. Elect Jesus. Somebody say, I'm going to elect Jesus. Elect Jesus. You got to elect Jesus. He's not going to let you down. He's not. Exactly. He's not. He's not I, I like how you put that, bro. Yes, sir. See, see, he Jesus is for you. Anybody that's willing to lay their life down is for you. Exactly. You got it. I, I heard some stories, and I'm not going. I'm not going to get in a, in a nasty place at all because I believe in keeping it dignified, and I, I'm a very honorable kind of person. But I heard right. that uh, some people tell me that recently someone did a rally, and they left their people hanging. <laughs> yeah. A rally. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, and, and so I saw that. Uh, so, but all I'm gonna say is that <laughs> Jesus will never leave us hanging. If anybody was hanging, who, who was hanging? It was him hanging on the cross. Right on the cross, Amen. And he hung for our sakes. And so, I want to just let you see that. Okay. Now, another scripture I want to give you is "Perfect Peace." One of my favorite songs from Marvin Sapp is not "Never Gonna Made It." <laughs> <laughs> I like that song, right? But my favorite right. Marvin Sapp song. Is actually perfect peace, and okay. yeah, yeah. people pass away. Right when they they pass away, they're gripped by this fear and they're gripped by just the shock. And a lot of times, I have to go into pastor mode before I can even be funeral director. And uh, one of my go-to songs to share with people is the song by Marvin Sapp about how God will keep you in perfect peace. And so, I want everyone to know today that as a believer, God is going to keep you in perfect peace. He's not going to leave you hanging. He's not going to uh, cast you aside. And so he loves you and I. That's what we have to understand. We have to hang in there and we have to know that my God loves me. God is not like a dead bee. Some people cannot follow God because they didn't have the best relationship with their natural fathers. See, I had a really awesome natural father, but he died when I was 11 years old. He was a pastor. He was a, a social worker and he suffered a heart attack at 37 years young. And so that 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 really hurt me and then a couple of years later my mother remarried and i got a stepdad from hell amen i love him but he he make a brother pray and so but 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 I, but what i want to show you here on a, on a on a serious note is that because of my foundational years i saw a, a natural father and a mother it gave me a perspective of how god is and so i know that my dad loved me unconditionally even though he may have wanted me to make straight a's may have wanted me to be uh, excellent in this and that. I knew that there was unconditional love in my house that my parents were for me. Sometimes in a, in a performance uh, culture, and that's one thing I've seen with, with us as African Americans, we don't genuinely love people unless they got stuff. Mm, and so you right. have people living fake lives because they're trying to get love. What they really want is love and acceptance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when you ask me, how many people join your church, Pastor Clay? I got to be like, Doc, uh, thousands did. When I know it was only four people that came down for salvation, and two of them were my cousins, and yeah. uh, and then, and and, the, and two of them only did that because I rode with them, and they want some food after it's over. You know what I'm saying? Instead of saying, but it don't matter if it was only one person that got saved. Thank God for one soul. Yeah, amen. amen. And, and so That's we have right. this competition thing, yeah. And so a lot of people don't have this; they don't have this uh, affirmation. And so I believe one of the things that we have to do even as African-Americans, even with the whole Black Lives Matter. And I know some people are, are fighting this thing here, but if we're still fighting people who are in our own lives that are African-American, why would somebody else want to respect what we don't respect? Come Amen. on. Amen. We, 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 we're saved and sanctified, but we'll drag somebody in a minute. I'm saying to you. Oh, quick. We'll, we'll throw somebody under the bus and everything. And so, but we do that culturally sometimes to deflect off of us. Like, I, I know how to rank really good because I grew up in an area that was in Missouri City, it was called Quail Run, right? <laughs> That's so, why you say I have a house in Quail Run. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that was my stuffing grounds in Quail Run. And before then, I lived in a neighborhood called Ridge Mountain. So mm -hmm. I lived exactly. around a, a lot of African-American people. Even though we were progressive African-American people, we still were African-American people. And they would get, they would go in on you on the bus. And so <laughs> if, you, if you're not going to be putting those hands on them and fighting, you got to learn how to make them laugh. And so what I was good, good at ranking and getting people back. But now as we're older, some of us are still doing that. And we don't understand that now that that thing that you're doing is now scarring people. It's scarring people. That's right. Yeah. And so there's so many people that are hurt. And so they're going around and hurting people like I'm going to hurt you before you hurt me. And so now you got a whole culture where the Bible says, how can the blind lead the blind except they both end up in the ditch? Mm. And right. so now you got people that are crab mentality. You got people. There are people right now. And it's sad to say, but they want to see our ministries fail. 
They want to see the business close down. And these are other African American people. They don't want to mm -hmm. see us win because they think we're trying to outshine uh, them. That's, yeah. that's crazy. And so if, if we fight everybody else and put our mouths on everybody and we never celebrate and encourage anyone, then we'll never have anything. And so how can we expect outsiders to care about us more than we care for ourselves? Mm -hmm. right? And so what we have to understand is that God is for us. And so we have to elect Jesus because when we elect Jesus, his nature becomes our nature. All right. Let, let right. me give you one more, then I'm going to give you this acronym and I'm done. Joshua 1 and 8. This is about meditation. This puts the ball in our court. Sometimes people are looking for the apostle, the, the, the pastor, the man of God, the woman of God. They're looking for us to fix their problems, but we ourselves have our own problems. Amen. Right? We have our own challenges. And so some people think that we're trying to police them and beat them up and say, I'm watching you. You you didn't do the best as a Christian today. And so we're not even looking to find fault with you. All we're doing is, is telling you what thus saith the Lord, right? We're serving up the meal he told us to serve up and it's yours to accept it or reject it. And then that same food that we're serving out, we're eating it too. So when I tell you to walk in love, I'm telling myself to walk in love. Walk in love, amen. Got it? When I'm telling you that God wants you to prosper, amen, and he wants you to be a giver, guess what? Just like you like to receive. Have you ever seen people for their birthday, they pin on birthday dollars? Right. They want you to give them money. Well, when we celebrate others, God is going to cause celebration to come to us because that what a man sold, they call it karma, but it's really Galatians 6 and 7, mm. right? Be not deceived. And I, I see on here that there's a cash app and there's Zale, right? And so people need to need to contribute because even when you sow seeds into other people, you cause God to do things for your behalf. But again, mm -hmm. if we don't invest in our own, how can we expect others to invest in us? Invest in know? us. Right? And so right. We're gonna invest to, to get the heart of the kingdom, and to operate like Jesus, we got to begin to elect him. We have to choose him. Was basically what I'm saying. When we go to the ballot box every morning, you got to choose, if I, am I going to be Jesus-like or satanic? Mm. Right. You got to make that choice. Because nobody else, I don't care if your mama try to put a guilt trip on you and tell you, you better vote for Trump or you better vote for Biden. At the end of the day, you better vote for Jesus. Huh. <laughs> because the Bible says he's actually the way, what? The truth, the truth and, and the life. life. All right. So Amen. get in this word and meditate day and night. And then, and then look, observe to do all that's written therein. That's Joshua 1 and 8. And then guess what's going to happen? You're going to make your way prosperous. And then you are going to have good success. Amen. And so what we have to do is begin to pastor and cover our homes. Because right. the schools are not telling them about the things of God. They're not telling them about what's right. I, I saw something last week on Twitter where a teacher attacked a young black student in her class because he was talking about police brutality. And she began to, to degrade black people. This is the teacher, all because he was just sharing his perspective. And so when you're in a mature state, you understand that even though I may not agree with you or you may not agree with me, we have to still respect each other. But we're to the point now, in this time, in this hour, where it's so much hate. It's so many people that are attacking one another that we're killing our witness. So after the election is over, there are people, they're not going to be able to go to church anymore with other people, or they're not be able to go to the same grocery store with people because they've been so mean and hateful. Yeah. So you win more over with the honey than you do with the vinegar. Come right, on. Right, right, right. Come on. Amen. So we have to be strategic because the Bible says in Proverbs 11 and 30, he or she who wins souls is wise. All right. It's wise. So we got to use wisdom. All right. Let me give you the peace acronym and then I'm going to prepare to wrap up because my time is ticking. OK, so just like I give you food analogies, I also use uh, diff different acronyms to help teach people in the body of Christ and anybody who will listen to Chef Pastor. All right. Here we go. This is the peace acronym. Letter P is presence slash protection. You got it. Presence mm -hmm. slash protection in this time more than ever. We need to understand that there is a blessing of us getting in his presence. You ever been stressed out or in fear and you be, just begin to pull away and get in worship and it just begin to change the atmosphere? Yes. yes sir. You got a boldness. Like there's a song. I don't know if y'all know about Shekinah Glory Ministry out of Chicago. Yes. What yes. Is they have a song called Stuff on the Devil's Head. Mm. And uh, it says, oh, 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 oh. And it, it just gets you like excited. It gets you, it gets you lit. It gets you crunk. Mm -hmm. It gets you however y'all, whatever your age range is when y'all are watching. <laughs> but um, they say lit now. So back in the yeah. day, they say crunk or, or mm -hmm. wired up. Wired up. Like, uh -huh. For my diverse crowd. Hype. 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 There you go. But in this song, 
it tells you to stuff on the devil's head. It says, we are Jesus people, mighty warriors, you know what I'm saying? Uh, encouraged believers, kings of the land, possessors of life, ready to battle for what's, what's right. And so what you gonna do? You gonna stuff on the devil's head. When I hear that song, it empowers me to let me know that this devil who's harassing me does not even have the authority that I think he has. Some of us, we blow the devil up like a balloon mm -hmm. and really he doesn't even have that power. He has as much power as we give him in the head. That's right. Even though he is real, I'm not saying he's not real, but we are conquerors. And so we have to understand that he is under us. And so you get in the presence, right? And when you get in the presence, you find that there's protection there. So my letter P for this word peace is presence slash protection. And the famous scripture I have for you is Psalm 91 verse one. He who dwells or she who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide yeah. under the shadow of the almighty. Yeah. I'm going to say this. Uh, last week, my daughter was on the bus and she, she got bullied. She's only a second grader, but she got bullied by a junior high boy. And so I love the Lord. He heard my cry, all that kind of stuff. Right. <laughs> but daddy in me was like, man, homeboy better watch out. Now, <laughs> being a person who has a lot to lose, you know that as a grown man, I can't do anything to a kid naturally, right? Right. I had to learn how to, that the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they're oh. my God to the pulling down the stronghold. So I had to ask the Holy Spirit, show me how to deal with this because my wife and I have gone through 13 miscarriages and have had to bury two children. And so the mm -hmm. last thing I'm going to let somebody do is come in and harass and mess with my miracle daughter or my, my son for that matter. And so right. I had to ask God what to do. And so I began to pray. And I begin to pray over her and tell her, you're covered. Don't matter. The angels of the Lord are watching you. You're covered. And so as I did that, the Lord just began to empower me to let me know that just like you're telling her that she's covered as the father, I'm assuring you as your father, you better hear me up in here, that I Mom. got you covered. And so I want the Daniels family to know God is covering the Daniels family. God oh. is covering this platform. God is covering all of your ministry assignments oh, because yeah. we are his. And so even though the enemy may think that he's coming, and he may come, he won't overcome. Amen. Amen. So letter P is protection. Moving on now. Letter E is encouragement. I want everyone today to be encouraged. That's, that's what this, this whole broadcast was about today, was giving you some, uh, you know, informative information, but to encourage your hearts to keep on keeping on. And so that's why we're telling you, be, be uh, blessed with the peace of God. Receive the peace of God. Receive the encouragement of God so that you can continue to make it in life. You're not going to give up. I know you want to give up. You're not going to quit. You're not going to cave in, but you're going to fight the good fight of faith. Why? Because God is with you. Here, here are my encouragement scriptures for you. Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not, for um, I am with thee. Be not dismayed. Look, for I am your God. For I will help you. Yes, I will help you. Yes, and I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. Now, what I did yesterday morning is that I went to the bus stop where the bully was with my daughter, and I just stood there at the bus stop, and my daughter waved at me. I didn't touch the young man. I kept my distance, but I let him know that there's somebody watching out for her, and so you can't treat her any kind of way. Amen. So that encouraged her, and she was good, and when she got home, she said, Daddy, he didn't mess with me. He didn't say anything to me. And I, I decree right now that every devil that has been harassing these precious uh, viewers of yours, come on, come on. That, that you're not by yourself. I know you might say, because I've heard stories now, some of you heard about how the uh, some of these uh, Trump supporters have been harassing people on the roads and doing this god-awful stuff. The devil is a liar. Amen. Amen. God is covered. He's watching us. He's protecting us. So you be encouraged. And then another scripture, Isaiah 54 and 17. This is my encouragement. No weapon that is formed against us shall be able to prosper. And that's the quick version of it. It goes deeper than that, but no weapon formed against the prosper. Letter A is the anointing. All right. That's Isaiah 10 and 27. By you electing Jesus as the Lord of your life, as the president of your life, as the boss of your life, you're getting connected to the anointing and the anointing. It removes burdens and it destroys yokes. And so if you're burdened down today, if you're yoked up today, as you elect Jesus, you're going to begin to partake in the peace as you tap into the anointing. All right. Are you ready for letter C? As we wrap this up, letter C is comfort and confidence. Mm. Everyone today receive comfort from the funeral director today. Amen. Receive yeah. comfort from the Holy Spirit so that yeah. you can walk in confidence. See, when a person's peace is robbed, they don't have confidence. When a woman is a victim of domestic violence, she doesn't have confidence. 
She doesn't feel like she's pretty. Her esteem is low. She doesn't feel like she belongs in this world. She holds her head down and doesn't look at you in the eye. But when she has confidence, she walks on the red carpet. And she, if she has long hair, short hair, you know how y'all women do. She walks with, with swag and, and lets you know, mama's here. I'm in the room now. Look at me. And that's what the enemy is trying to do. He's trying to rob us of our confidence so we won't stand up for what we have a right to. And so I want us to be encouraged today and know that we have confidence. And, and here, here are my confidence scriptures. Romans 8 and 31, it says, if God be for you, who mm. can be against you? Against you. Amen. But, but this administration is against me or this system is against me. If God be for me, who can be against me? And, and what I say is that it doesn't matter. All right. Mm. And then verse 36, Romans 8, 31 is what I just quoted. But Romans 8, 36 says, nay, in all these things, we're more than conquerors. And so Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our King, has already conquered all these forces or whatever. He just wants us to trust him by faith and walk under his guidance. But he made us more than conquerors because he already fought the battle and we get the benefit from it. And then our last one is uh, Hebrews 10, 35. Also, it goes with confidence and comfort. Hebrews 10 and 35 says, cast not away, therefore, your confidence because it has great recompense of reward. And it simply means that being confident, it pays. There are some people that may not be the best looking guys. Like, let's say a guy like me, just an average looking guy. But my wife is a dime piece, right? <laughs> right. right. The reason why an average guy like me was able to get a beautiful dime piece like my wife was because I had the confidence to approach her. Some people don't get things in life and don't get God's best in life because they have low self-esteem and they don't have the confidence. Some people don't vote because they don't have the confidence that their vote is going to count. Right. So, Amen. Oh Hold on to your confidence because confidence is another sign of having faith that I believe God is with me. I believe God's got me and I believe that I can do all things. Lastly, letter E is eternity. And I'll give you the overview again. Eternity. It's time for us to start partaking in eternity. When you operate in hate and you operate in doing these racist, prejudiced things, what you're doing is that you're limiting yourself from experiencing the blessing that's in eternity. Because guess what? If you hold me down on this side, if you try to stop my promotion on this side, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And even though I'm in this world, I'm not of this world. And so there are rewards that we have coming to us in, in glory, even though I know you can prosper now, too. But I'm telling you that whatever the enemy has robbed you from on this side, he can't hold back what God wants to do for you eternally. Amen. 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 So the scripture I want to close with today, two scriptures, and then I'll go over these uh, letters again and we'll pray. It's going to be 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. This is the uh, Amplified Bible. It says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. Sanctified. Amen. That is, separates you from profane and vulgar things. So whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, you still represent him. You're a kingdom citizen before you're a Republican or a Democrat. And so don't make your don't don't allow your party to, to, to make you vulgar and hate, hateful towards people mm. because you're not you're, you're representing a higher kingdom. All right. Make make you pure. God, make me pure. Make me whole undamaged. After this election, may the Lord keep us safe, sound and secure. Mm. Consecrated to him when you don't know what to do. It's time to pull apart, set apart ourselves for his purpose. And may your spirit, soul and body be kept complete and be found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know when the Lord's coming back. You don't know when the Lord's coming back, but I know he's coming back sooner now than he was before. And so we want to make sure that what we do is that we're representing him and we're being what we call salt and light. Salt is where the flavor comes from. because The Bible says that we're the salt of the earth. Amen. And what good is the salt if it loses flavor? So, um, so check this out. My vision as the chef pastor and even our vision for Flavor Church is developing well-balanced believers who flavor the world. Not right. And so just right. like a natural chef cooks up a well-balanced meal to hit the spot for you. It's our time now as believers, as the church to rise up, whether we're in a building or streaming on a platform like we're on today. We still have to be the church because there are people who are scared. It's all outdoors and they don't know about the 23rd songs because, mm. again, all they were eating was sugar. All they were doing, <laughs> you know what I'm saying to you. And so now when, it, when the rubber meets the road. They don't have any meat to hold on to. But you and I, we have the word of God. So my last and final scripture is Proverbs. I'm mean, sorry, Philippians 4 and 7. And I'm done. Mm. And I thank you for the I time. Love it. Last scripture. Let's get to it really quick. 
Philippians 4 and 7. There we go. Philippians 4, verse 7. This is what it says, Amplified Bible. And the God of peace, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. Amen. Receive his peace today, my precious brothers and sisters around the world. And know Amen. that at the end of the day, whoever is elected president, it, they're not going to be able to stop your success in God because you have made the quality decision today to elect Jesus. So, oh, Father, as we're here today, I thank you for Apostle and Brother James on today, giving me and uh, this amazing opportunity just to feed the, the nations of the world that are watching all around the world today on these various platforms. I yes. thank you today, Lord God, for the ability to allow us to soar as your sons and your daughters. Thank we you, curse God. lack today. We curse shortage today. We yes. curse sickness and disease. We bind COVID and the effects of COVID. Yes. On us and yes. our yes. And we yes. thank you that we're under divine protection. We decree the blood of Jesus right now. We thank right you that now, no Lord. weapon that's formed against us shall be able to prosper. We thank yes. you, Lord God, that you're with us. You're shielding us. We come against every hate group today. And we believe, Lord God, that our lives do matter. We believe, Lord God, that our lives matter so much that you, Jesus, laid your life down. You died so that we can live long and live strong. And we give your name glory, honor, and praise today. We thank you, Lord God, for just surrounding us with angelic protection. We thank you for the blood at work in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Bless you all. Thank you so oh. much for the opportunity. Wonderful word, wonderful word. I look forward to, a, to more opportunities, praise God, to bring you on air with me, praise God, to share whatever God puts on your heart. Yeah. Um, for people that are watching that may want to know where your church is, could you please just share your location for us? Yes, ma'am. Right now, because of COVID, we've been doing Facebook Live through okay. my page, Chef Pastor Arrow Clay, Sundays at 1 p.m. And so, uh, for the last two Sundays, that uh, previous Sundays, I've had uh, speaking engagements in other churches. And so we didn't uh, stream there because I was ministering at the other churches. But we'll resume this Sunday at 1 uh, p.m. And we're actually uh, seeking the Lord now about our uh, a new location uh, that we can do some different things and actually make it into a studio as well. So y'all be praying with us about that. But you can find us online at Flavor Church. And that's Get flavored.org. Also, you can find us by putting in flavored.church as well. And we're on uh, Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on uh, Instagram. We're also on Vimeo. And so you can find us on different places. But yeah, so right now, but it's right now it's uh, on Sundays at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time or Texas Time on Facebook Live. Okay. Amen. Right. Amen. Sounds good. Again, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I love, I love the fact that uh, earlier, how you say you just walked on into the call on your life, and I and I see God uh, all over you, all over the ministry. Praise God, all over. Even you know, we don't like to talk a lot about funeral homes, but we need to talk about it. We need to talk about this thing. Praise God, and uh, I think that I want you to share also the information uh, for those that need. I had a couple of people. I'm telling you, since COVID mm -hmm. started, there's been a lot of people that um, have passed away. And um, they need services. People need services. So yes. I want you to share that information so that those that are listening, uh, if they're in a planning mode or they need to be, uh, you know, setting up something, they can get in contact with you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, our mortuary is called Clay's Mortuary and Cremations, and we're basically on call 24-7, 365. Uh, we're located in the Brookshire Katy area of town, but we go everywhere. So anywhere you are, we can come and service you. And also during COVID, what we've been doing is making house calls. And so if someone passes away, they never have to step foot out of their home. They can come right to where we are. And uh, our phone number is real easy to remember. It's 281 Clayway. That's 281 Clayway, and it stands for 281-252-9929. And that's the way, that's the service that we offer. So my last name, of course, is Clay, and we service every family that comes through these doors.
just like they are clay. So we give them what we call the clayway service. And so we customize services to whatever they like. So we have uh, had just recently had a gentleman who was a Dallas Cowboys fan. And so we did a whole Dallas Cowboys theme memorial service for him. So whatever your uh, likes are, we can do that. Whatever your uh, budget is, we can pretty much work with most budgets. And uh, again, we're here to serve. And you can uh, get information by going to claysmortuary.com. And you can see some of the previous clients that we've served and things of that nature. And uh, again, we're here to serve. And my wife is the one who uh, can help you with the pre-need. And we have a other couple of pre-need agents where if you want to plan your funeral out in advance, we can look and see kind of what you're wanting and what it will cost. And you can uh, get, get started. So just give us a call or hit us up on uh, Facebook at claysmortuary.com or 281 Clayway. All right. Well, well I want to thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing the word. Uh, those who please subscribe to the channel. We'll have more. Uh, we have more of the gospel coming to you. More men and women of God that that uh, that God has, you know, given a passion and have anointed to, uh, like like Pat, Chef Pastor say, feed his sheep. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, we want you to get fat, fat full off of the word of God. So thank you, Pastor, for uh, joining us live on My Gospel Soul Live. Amen. It's an honor to be here. And I pray blessings over you, your family, your ministry, and all of your endeavors in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. God bless you. All right. His face down. Click. Y'all right there. Let me see you. Amen. All right. So, amen. Praise God. We thank Pastor Clay for coming on with us today. We've had a wonderful, wonderful time in the Lord. Praise God. Amen. We want to take this opportunity also for those of you that are listening. If you would like to be a guest on the show, all you have to do is send me a message. Inbox me, Queenie Daniels, uh, uh, Pastor Daniels, Apostle Daniels, you know, uh, My Gospel Soul, Eagles United. We are everywhere. Listen, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, we're everywhere. Amen. And so we just want you to be a part of this ministry. Praise God. Uh, as you see the stuff scrolling at the bottom of the screen. OK, make sure that you sow into the ministry. Praise God. Amen. This keeps us going. This also if you want to have a podcast or a live show, we have the equipment. We welcome you. We have a couple of fees. Amen. But you're able to come in and sit in our studio. And go live and do the things that you need to do. You can contact us again. The number is below at 832-992-9649. We want to take a moment to talk about JD's man cave. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is Jay that is, okay today? Yeah. You know, talking about cave. JD's man cave. Uh, uh, and this is a progressive show that I do on Saturdays at seven o'clock. And what I do is I try to um, attack and, and uh, deliberate and talk about uh, issues that affect the black community and the black male perspective uh, is what I try to offer on different, you know, attributes and things that are happening in or, or different uh, things that are happening in our community and how they affect us and what we need to do and need to be talking about in order to get past it. Uh, and my mantra is educated black men, educating black men. And now that does not mean that I'm excluding women at all. I love when women come on the show and, and offer their views and their values. And we sit and simply have a honest, truthful and insightful discussion. And again, that's every Saturday at seven o'clock right here in Houston, Texas. We, um, do JD's Man Cave with the help of my beautiful wife here who does all my production work. And she has me and my guests looking good every week. <laughs> and I thank her for that so much. But yeah, right here on my Gospel Soul platform, we're doing JD's Man Cave and it has been a success up to this point. And we will keep it going. So let's talk a little bit about uh, my Gospel Soul Network, the things that we are doing. Well, my gospel soul is doing everything. <laughs> We're doing everything. 
We do Let's we do so down. much. I, I stay busy uh every week dealing with my wife. There's never a dull moment, that's for sure. But we are just a faith-based platform where we simply uh, try to service our community. We are we are uh, kingdom citizens, first of all, um, kingdom of God citizens. And we figured that God put each and every one of us here on earth to service one another, one way or the other. And so each week, my wife and I, we, we try to do our part. Whatever God has put on our heart to do, we try to do it. And we try not to faint in our uh, efforts each week. And God keeps blessing us and keep blessing the My Gospel Soul platform each week. And like so I say, we, we invite yeah. we want to invite you all to be a part of the My Gospel Soul family. Exactly. If you want to broadcast, if you, like I say, you know, it's available for you. You know, we um, the seeds that every, that people sow go towards all of the many things that we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, like yes. I say, toiletries that we uh, are able to give the elderly and clothes and pantries, clothes, food, pantry. food. We're able to do a lot, and I know that we look like a small ministry, but we are. Amen. Yep. But we're mighty through God. We, we so we've been able movie. to strike a, a, a mighty, mighty blow. blow. <laughs> <laughs> and we, I just want to take the time to share his show. And I also want you to know that tomorrow we have we have Sus United coming on tonight on Blog Talk Radio. We Blog Talk Radio forward slash My Gospel Soul. We have Pastor, uh, I mean, Apostle and Prophetess Tebow coming on. Yes. So we definitely, powerful, definitely don't powerful. want you to miss. It's going to be at 6 p.m. And you can call in and listen to the live show at 347-826-9424. While you're there, okay, if you go online, while you're there, check out the other shows we have on the lineup. We got a whole lot coming up, and we are just trying to make sure that we provide content that you will enjoy, that you can feed off of, that you can... Uh, that you can be informed, uh, informate, like you said, educating right. black men, educate, educated black men, educating black men. Exactly. We want to get get uh, be able to provide helpful nuggets. Now I'm looking for someone that can cook live. Okay, so if you got that, you know, if you want to cook, you got your chef, you know, and you want to cook up something, we are hooking it up to where you can do that as well. Right in the studio. Exactly. So make sure you get in contact. Give me the call in number again, dog. The call in number is 347 826 9424. 347 826 9424. That's calling for the show. We love you all. We want you to remember that without faith is impossible to please God, but with God, all things are possible. Who cares? God cares. Oh, so